Hey guys! All right, well, as you can see, she's starting to look like a truck, but don't get too excited because this is just the first uh, trial fitting of the bed on the frame to figure out how I'm going to set it up, okay? So I've been talking to Rusty about how to set it up, and it was a little bit confusing to me, his directions, but he gave me some good ideas about what I need to do. So let me go over what I've done. Hopefully to save you guys some time. I've got quite a bit of time in doing this, but maybe if I show you guys what I've done, it'll save you a little bit of time if you're doing the same thing. So let me show you real quick. All right. So when I uh, first talked to him, he told me I should get some, some jack stands and set this bed on that, assemble the bed. And when I first assembled it, I did not put the tailgate on it, but it's on it now because it helps it to stay more square. Um, but he told me to put a couple, he told me he uses one jack stand in the back, but I had these two here and I stacked some wood on there to get it, to get it as the height I wanted it to be. And then I got a jack stand up there and I got it. Uh, you can see it's uh, right next to the frame coming up and I got some shims there. I got some shim stock. It's really handy to have uh, if you're trying to set this thing up to get, and you can see I got shims there and shims here. The, those are the shims you use like in a door if you're putting a door in your house. The little wood shims, they work really great for just moving stuff just a little bit to get it square. Um, but anyhow, when I first did this, he told me I should, this, I didn't know this, but this line across here is called a belt line, okay? And he told me to set, to, to mark 10 inches down from the belt line and put my bed there, okay? And I did that, um, and as you can see, there's the line right there, and there's another one over there. But when I did that, everything, I was having a problem because my factory cross member there and here was running, was, was keeping me from putting the wood down. And this is a piece of pine that I bought, and I cut it 76 and a half inches. And I, did, I wanted to put it in there just to kind of get an idea of how things would sit. So I, I got that and put it in there because we're going to put cedar in here to start when we're done. But anyhow, the way I've got this set up now, it's eight inches um, down from the belt line. Let me grab this square real quick and I can show you. So I came down. I put the square up against there. You can see I'm just a little bit below eight inches. Um, I think this thing has shifted a little bit, but I'm... I'm a little bit below eight, eight inches there, about eight and a three eighths. And on the other side, let's see where I'm at on this side. I'm, I'm using these uh, jack stands, which aren't the greatest in the world because they got center pieces that move around. And this one here, see, I'm a little closer to eight inches there. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm disassembling this thing at this point, but I'm going to show you real quick. But anyway, I had it set up at eight inches off the <coughs> off the belt line. And when I had it set at eight inches off the belt line, the reason I did that was because, at least on the 88S10, I want you to notice this board, it's sitting on that lip on the front tailgate panel. It's sitting on that lip on the rear tailgate panel. But look at that, it's sitting right on top of that frame, perfectly on top of that frame, <coughs> which is great because it's gonna help support the the, cat or the the bed. Now I am gonna take one of Rusty's mounts and put one right in this area here, about, I don't know, a foot back or so from, from the front of the bed. But what I'm gonna do is, now Rusty recommends you use these mounts here and I don't know if I can use those. And the reason I don't know is because um, I want the mount, the, the cross member from Rusty to line up with the square holes in the bed strips, the metal bed strips that go across. There's, there's I think, nine boards across here. And in between each one is a metal strip that sits, it kind of overlaps each board. And it has square holes in it to put... Uh, carriage bolts in to clamp everything together and I want to put one uh, cross member here one of Rusty's cross members right here to to line up with the, the bolt holes so I can run bolts through that 
black pipe that I bought. If you guys remember, it's right over there in the corner. You can see it down there. Um, I bought black pipe instead of one inch square tubing because it's half the price of one inch square tubing. And it's one and a quarter inches uh, in diameter. So I'm going to put one there where that's at. And then I'm going to put another one somewhere between the rear axle and this cross member. Somewhere in here, wherever the bolt holes line up, I don't remember. But I'm not worried about that right now. I haven't even started that process. But you can see another thing. Another thing I like with this bed sitting here at this uh, eight inches height or close to eight inches is this is one of Rust D's mounts right here. See that? And on, on the back here, it slides right between the frame right between the frame and that board. It sits almost perfectly. So once I figure out where I'm gonna put this mount somewhere between this, this factory cross member and the shock mount, somewhere in there, I'm gonna put it across there, then it'll sit, um, the board will sit right on top of that mount and that's great. Now in the middle here, there'll be a little bit of a gap because the, the black pipe's gonna be underneath of that. But you know, if I'm worried about it, I can put a flat washer in there or something. Yeah, I may do that. I, I don't know. I'll figure that out when the time comes. I'm not worried about that right now. But anyhow, um, so that's that's my plan there. And the reason I picked this was because I want, I, I'm not into slam trucks. I mean, I, I, and some people are. That's cool. You know, if you like that kind of thing, let me back out here a little bit. If you like that kind of thing, that's fine. You know, I, I don't, I'm not knocking you. I'm just not really into slam trucks. And Bo doesn't want this truck to be bagged or dropped on the ground. He wants to be able to drive it and enjoy it with his family. He doesn't care about that. Um, so I want the bed to look pretty much like a normal bed. And as you can see, and actually, if you look at those grind marks, those grind marks are where the old um, uh, channel, there, there's a, 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 what do you call it, dead gimmick? Uh, ang angle iron. There was an old, oh, the old angle iron was welded to the to the the bedside right there, and that's where the old bed sat. So you know, wh right below those welds is where the wood was, and it's 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 basically right in the same spot. So this bed's going to be look pretty much like a functional bed, which I'm sure Bo's not going to use it as one, but it looks going to look like one. And all the wood is going to ni lay nice and flat across there, so that's going to look great. And the other reason I chose this is because, let me step back here. The other reason I chose this is because when you look at this from this angle, now remember, right there is a piece of metal that comes and curves down and attaches to the running board, which runs across underneath the cab and back to the rear fender. So that piece drops down there. Um, so the, you're not going to be able to see that frame there. But th if you look at the, the wheel... The, the axle, it's lined up basically centered on the, uh, the fender, and the height looks really good there. Um, I could take it, this tire, one of these tires. I had to take these tires off because when I put, I'll show you guys here in a second. Hold on. This is going to be kind of hard to see because it's not going to be the right orientation, but it's going to be close. Get this tire in here. I don't know if it'll stand there or not, but let's see. Um, hold on a second. I'm trying to get it to line up so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about here. I'll get this chalk and put it there. All right, so the way, the way I got the axle set up, that's basically how it's going to look. So I got, you know, and obviously that tire, I've got the rear axle up on jack stands. So that tire is going to sit further up into the fender. You know, it, it's probably going to sit with the tread just inside the lip of the, of the rear fender. And that's, that's, I think that's kind of the look that I want. I think that's, it's a look that Bo wants. So it's not going to be squatted down. Then that's why I picked this height. Now, if you want, you know, if you want your truck slammed, hey, that's cool. You, you know, you got to slam it. You got to do what you got to do. Obviously... All this in here would change if you drop the truck down. I remember I got the cab as high as it'll go on, the, I think it's five or five and a half inch setting on the rusty mounts. And the other thing I got to do is I, I forgot to bring my, 
my uh, mounts, my pieces that mount to the the cab mounts and come out for your um, running boards to sit on. I forgot to bring those. So Russ is going to send me a set, um, and i got to weld them up, but that's no big deal. So he's going to bring me a set of those, and I'm going to put those on here. And then i got to put the running board on, and i got to put the, the filler piece that goes between the, the, the bed and the running board and see how I line up. So that may change the height of the bed a little bit. I don't know. I'm hoping it won't because I really like the fact that the wood sits on that factory uh, sill and the one back on the tailgate, and it also touches the frame right there. And actually, this, this cross member here, it touches this cross member too. Let me, let me move it over and I'll show you. It does not touch this one, but the cool thing is that gap underneath there, guess what it, it is? It's one and an eighth of an inch. So I can take a piece of this black pipe and cut it and set it on top of that sill and weld it in place and the wood will sit right on top of it. It's perfect. But let me take this wood and move it so you guys can see what I'm talking about with this, with this uh, cross member up here. So if I take this wood that I've cut and I set it in place, as you can see, it's literally right on top of that cross member. So, you know, I can, I can, if I wanted to, I could actually go through, uh, and I, and I probably will, I'll probably drill some holes. Cause if you, if you look at the pictures of beds on these trucks, a lot of them have got a big round washer and a nut and a, uh, carriage bolt that's countersunk into the wood in certain places to be able to, to bolt the bed to the, the frame. And so I'm probably going to do that here. I'm going to bolt it to the frame. And then I'm thinking about over here where I put the rusty cross member at. Since I'm probably not going to put it on this, which I would like to, but I'm not. I'm probably going to make me a couple stands that come off the frame and attach to that rusty mount that I can use to uh, attach it to the frame. You know, I, actually I can just get some flat steel and screw and drill some holes through the frame and bring it right up into, into that mount and mount it that way. And back there... Uh, it's going to sit on the frame so I can bolt it to the frame there. No big deal. So that's, that's how that's working out. Okay. So, so far everything's looking good here. Um, one problem I do have is I got some major warpage as you can see on this bedside on this side. And I got major warpage over here on this one, but a new set of bedsides is a thousand bucks and Bo's trying to avoid having to pay that cost. So I'm trying to get this bedside, to uh to straighten out here's what i'm going to do i'm going to here's what i'm going to attempt to do so i went today and i bought where's it at um i bought this i bought this aluminum and i'll show you what i bought that aluminum for but i'm going to take it back because it was not cheap all right so i got a piece of of uh what is this one inch or three quarter inch let's see eight one eighth by three quarter by six feet of angle iron. So it's eighth inch thick, it's kind of heavy. So what I'm gonna do, if you notice, um, what I did is I took and I laid this board on both sides up against the side of the bed and I took a Sharpie and I marked where the bottom of the board is. So I know, cause I want it to be below that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this angle iron. It's gonna be kind of, kind of hard to do this one handed, but let me try to get over here, see if I can show you guys. So I'm gonna take this angle iron and I'm gonna lay it in here like so, like that, below that line that I have. Basically, what I'm gonna do is, so here's the line that I drew and here's the lip that comes up from the bottom of the fender. So I, I think I'm gonna lay my angle iron right on top of this lip. And obviously I'm gonna have to cut two pieces cause I'm not gonna have, be able to, um, go across the wheel well opening because as you can see the wheel opening is uh, the, the, the angle iron would be below that so I don't want to do that so I'm going to go just like that and I'm going to try to straighten this out and get as close as I can to being straight and then weld this angle iron to it and hopefully that will help straighten out this, this uh, bedside enough that I can get, get everything to fit because it's right now 
Right now, that's my biggest issue. If this bed side was straight, I could go ahead and put my mounts in here, but I got to pull the bed back off, try to get this straightened out. And I hope I can do it because it's, it's pretty warped. I mean, I've been working on it, trying to get it to smooth out, but it's, it's not cooperating. The good news is uh, a lot of where it's bad is below, you know, there, there's, a, there's a line where the bottom of the wood is. So you can have the top of the wood up here kind of where that bolt is. So a lot of the imperfections and, and warpness is going to be below the, the wood. So you're not going to be able to see it. So if I, if, if I can get it straightened out up in this area here, I'll be good. I just don't know if I can or not. Now the tailgate, um, I got one bolt in the hinge here and one bolt in the hinge there, but these, these pieces here, I don't have them set yet. They're kind of cattywampus. But what I did is I put the tailgate in place in there, and then I just ran a bolt through where the chain goes just to, just to hold it in place. So I'm going to take the bed off, and I'm going to put probably some flat washers in between the, uh, the, the tailgate and the bedside to get that bed straight up and down to get it, get it perpendicular so it's bright. Because I, I still got to drill the holes on the bottom and attach both of these end pieces to the back sill plate because I haven't done that yet. But I was, trying, I was trying to get it lined up and I kept having problems with it. I thought, you know, I'll just get the tailgate and put it on there and it'll make it really simple to get to line those up. It'd been nice. I don't know why they didn't. It would have been nice if... If these this piece, I bought this piece because both of these rear ones. If you guys watch my my video on this, me fixing these bed sides, this rear one here was rusted out really bad, and I bought new ones to replace it with. But the guys that built them, they never put any holes in them. So, and I mean that's fine. I, I'll I'll put holes in it. It's not that big of a deal. I just kind of wish they had. But you know whatever. It's not the end of the world. So uh, so I got to do that. I got to drill three holes in the back of this one. And three holes in the front there because it takes six bolts to hold that hold that in. This sill piece is, you know, it's pretty wide, so it's it's on both sides of that. And I had to, I couldn't figure out how it went. And I was trying to figure it out, and Russ told me, well, it goes inside the uh, the stake pocket because if you guys remember, I had to put a patch panel in this one, a small piece in that one, and I had to put a really big piece in this one. It went all the way out to there because of the rust. So I had to cut, I had to notch that out so I could get this this rear seal plate up inside the the stake pocket that's where it goes so anyhow that's where i'm at with that so my next step now is to pull the bed off and i'm gonna flip it upside down and i'm gonna try this angle iron trick i don't know if it's gonna work or not because i've got some i mean you can see how badly warped that is that's quite a bit of warpage and you know this back here it's attached to the uh the stake pocket so this is not going to move so i got to go from here forward and try to get you know it squared up i hope hope i can i may end up having to weld some extra plate in there or something i don't know what i'm going to do and that one there's just it's the same way it's warped pretty bad you know if these were new i wouldn't be doing any of this it, it would be done but you know i he he doesn't want to buy them so i mean I'm, I'm trying to respect his wishes and do the best i can here um i'm just worried that he's going to have you know labor in them and and he could be able to afford to buy new ones. But I'm going to do what I can. If I can't get it, then I'm going to have to talk to him and tell him, well, we're going to have to buy bedsides. No, you don't want to. But, you know, by the time I get this done, it's, it's. I mean, it is what it is. All right. So now another issue that I've dealt, that I've come up with here that I wanted to show you guys is when you're doing this, at least in my case, the truck I have here is a 1988 standard cab long bed truck. So it's got a 118 inch wheelbase, right? And the 48 Chevy truck, maybe the maybe 48 to 54, I'm assuming they're probably all the same. It has a 116 and a half inch wheelbase. So it's this wheelbase is an inch and a half longer than the 48 truck would be. So, but I want my tire to be centered in my wheel well. I want it to look like it's supposed to look, you know. And, you know, it's a little bit off right now, but, I mean, I'm not done. I, I Obviously, i got more work to do. So, oh, and one other thing I want to show you real quick before I talk about that. The, uh, if you notice in here, my brake, my brake rotor, because this is, this is a rear drum, my brake rotor is almost even with this bedside. So, uh, when I put the wheel on, I got a 10-inch wheel that goes in here, and it's got a 3 and 3 quarter inch backspace on it. So, from the back of the mounting point to the back of the wheels three and three quarters inches and when i put it on there obviously it sits in too far so i got i got to get a two and a half inch spacer i, I measured it out and i got to get a two and a half inch spacer 
to put back here. And Russ told me that with an eight inch wheel, which is what I'm using on the front, which is a, is a zero offset, I need a one and a half inch spacer. So that's what I'm gonna use in the front. So I gotta get a two and a half back here and a one and a half at the front. He told me a lot of times people will have to use a three inch back here, but because I ordered a wheel, or I had, I had Bo order wheels with uh, a shallower backspace, because normally on a 10 inch wheel, it'd be, if it was centered, you'd have you know five and five. But he ordered, well, it'd be like four and four because you've got the, you know, the, the spokes in the middle of the wheel or the center section. So, uh, but I had him order a three and three quarters. So it's not even four inches from the back of the wheel to the, to the back of the mounting point. So it moved the wheel out. We gave it a nice deep dish, which is really cool looking. I'm not going to reveal to you guys what wheels we're using on this thing right now, but I'll show you later. They're going to be beautiful on this truck. I, I put, I put the one on here so I could kind of check everything out and it, it looks gorgeous. But anyhow, um, you're going to need at least a two and a half inch spacer back here. And you're going to need a one and a half inch on the front if you're using eight inch wide wheels. Um, you know, the, the fenders on this thing are so fat. If you use skinny wheels, it's going to look kind of stupid. And you'd have to really space them out to make them look good. So I'd recommend you use, you know, a fat a fat wheel on this. Now, this this fender here, I can tell you, I measured from the the bedside to the out, out, outer side of the fender. And it's right at 12 inches. So if I've got a 10 inch wheel and I space it right, it sh I should have basically an inch on each side. So I should be able to put a nice fat tire on there, a 275, 60 or maybe a 295, 50, probably going to go with 275, 60 because they're taller. So I'm going to put them on there and it should look really good, but I got to get my spacers ordered and get them on there. But anyhow, that's what that's going to look like. You know, when it's done, when I'm done, the tire is going to be basically right in that. Of course, this, you know, this tire is not even mounted to the axle, so I can't say it's centered in the wheel. I don't know. But when I'm done, it's going to be basically set pretty much where it's at now, except it's going to be up inside the wheel well more, up inside the fender more, and it's probably going to be in just a little bit. But that's, that's pretty close to where it's going to be. So that's that. Okay, now, again, I was saying that this truck has got a 118-inch wheelbase, and... The 48 Chevy truck's got 116 and a half, so you got an extra inch and a half uh, in here. Now, if you if you buy a S10 standard cab short bed, um, then you have to extend the frame out, and you can make it 116 inches, so you're good to go. If you buy a S10 uh, extended cab long bed, you have to shorten it, so again, you can make it 116 inches. But I was trying to avoid Bo having to pay me to do all that work to shorten frames. I've done it before but it's a pain in the butt. It's, it's a really pain in the butt to try to get everything square. So when you do an alignment on it, it tracks down the road properly. I was trying to avoid all that. So I bought the 118 inch wheelbase, but now here's the problem I have is I have a little bit of a gap here, um, about three inches in between here and you can see the drive shaft, which is kind of ugly. So I don't like that very much, but, um, and actually I think this thing's minor. Yeah, it's, it's moved on me. It's actually, I need to go back a little more. Come on. Ah. All right, hold on a second. I'm going to take those out of there and get them out of my way. It should be about right there. So that's the gap I got, you know. So what can I do? Well, fortunately, fortunately for me and for Bo, my neighbor, well, my brother's neighbor, came up. Uh, he, somebody he knew had some metal that came from a school, I think it was, or a business. They had a bunch of uh, metal desks that were like, uh, what do they call them? Those, those cubicle type things. And they'd taken them all apart and they were gonna throw this metal in the trash. And he found out about it and he, he called them and talked to them and they said, if you want it, come get it, you can have it for free. Well, here it is right here. So this is, this is nice, thick, heavy steel. And I've used a little bit of this on this truck already in a couple places, but it's nice, thick, heavy steel. It's got a nice, uh, rounded off edge. So what I'm going to do, I'll try to show you this. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it, I'm going to cut it down and see where the, where the, where the bolts are right there. I'm going to, I'm going to cut one flange off of it and I'm going to bolt it into those bolts. And of course it's not going to sit that, that tight. I'm, I'm going to cut it, you know, so I got probably a half an inch gap between the bed and the truck. So I'm going to put that in there like that and go down to the, to the running board or the, that, that, 
piece that comes across there. I'm going to go down to that with it. So that's going to kind of fill in this area between the bed. And then I've got another piece of this stuff that's like six feet long that I can also cut and put across here and attach it to that piece and the piece on the other side. So when I'm done, and I'm not sure, I'm not sure if I'm even going to put a top piece in because when I get done with this, I'm going to put these pieces on and kind of see what it looks like. The top, I mean, you can see the top is probably, you know, a couple inches. It's not near as bad. This is, this is three and a half inches here because, you know, the cab curves. So I'm going to use this to fill that in on the sides and I may make a piece across top. I may not. I don't know. The good thing is here I can, I can uh, cut this piece to fit and then I can drill the, the holes to match those bolts. And when I put this in, um, I can just bolt it through those bolt holes and I don't even have to weld it or nothing. It'll just bolt on. And that way it can come off if it needs to come off. If for some reason you ever have to get in there, you can unbolt it and take it off. Um, so that's cool there. Uh, let's see. One other thing I wanted to talk about. So at this height of bed, um, let me move this board again. So at this, ah, come on, cooperate. There we go. So at this height, at this height, when I put this L channel that goes, there's a, there's a piece of channel that goes, attaches to the wood and then comes up the side of the bed. So when I put that L channel on, it's hitting this bolt, this bottom bolt where the front front panel mounts. So I'm going to have to take this bolt out and drop it down to where the wood is and redrill a new hole so it that so it misses that channel. Then I'll have to just have to put a little notch in the wood to, to, to miss it. But that's I mean it's all going to be covered in. It doesn't matter. So it's no big deal. The the, the channel is going to cover all that up. When it, you won't even see it. But but that's one of the modifications I'm going to have to make on both sides. I'm going to have to cut take take that bottom bolt out and redrill it and move it down. But I, like I said, I, you can see I got probably an inch and a half between the bottom bolt and the bottom of that channel. See that? So I got plenty of room. I can move that bolt down. No big deal. All right. I think that's about it. It's looking pretty good. Now at this point, I got to take the bed off the frame and flip it upside down and see if I can get my angle iron trick to work to get this squared up enough that it looks decent. I'm not sure I can or not, but that's what I got to try to do. So that's my next step. Uh, and the reason I decided, there we go. The reason I decided to start working on this bed was because I was waiting on um, my motor setback plates and Rusty sent a message the other day. He's like, man, he says, I'm really sorry. My, <coughs> my mail lady, was going to send you those parts, and I gave her the wrong shipping label, and she meant to tell me about that and have me give, get the right shipping label, and she forgot to tell me, so they're still sitting in my house, but I'll mail them out. He mailed them out Friday, so I should have them by probably Tuesday or Wednesday, but I think tomorrow I'm going to work on, well, I'm going to work on this bed, but if I don't have the, the setback plates, I'm going to work on the front bumper, getting all those brackets and all that, all the stuff, the where the radiator mounts and all that, because Bo ordered a new radiator too. And so I want to get that radiator and kind of get an idea of where it's all going to sit too. So I can get those mounts, those rusty mounts all assembled and put on the, the front bumper area, um, get the bumper mounts put on there and get the radiator cross member put on there so I can put the radiator on and also, it, also the front fender's bolt onto it too. So I can work on that. But I'm going to work on this bed first because I want to try to get it fixed because I need to, need to figure out if I'm going to have to break the noose of bow and say, look, man, we're going to have to buy bed sides. I really don't want to, but, you know, I, I, I really will, I'm really trying to save these the best I can, but I can't promise that's going to happen. But anyhow, guys, that's that's it for now. So I hope you enjoyed this video. You know, if, if you got any questions, uh, you know, I'm not no expert at this. This is the first time I've ever done this. It's sometimes frustrating for me because it's, it's you know, it's like I told my brother. He's like, man, you're going kind of slow. And I'm like, dude. I'm putting an engine from 1976, a transmission from 1986, a frame from 1988, all on a, with a body that's 40 years older than all that. And I'm trying to fit all this together, and it's just a nightmare. Just like the, the floor um, I showed you guys inside the cab, where I, I, I didn't think I'd have to, have to cut the floor <coughs> to fit the transmission in, but I do. And the, the steering column, I, I got to figure out whether I can clear the the header or not, I gotta look at that. So, you know, we gotta figure that out. But 
it's moving along. It's just it's just slower than I want it to be. But you know, it's 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 time consuming. It, that people don't understand how long it takes. I've I've been working on this for a day and a half. You know, before I even made this video, because I, I didn't think you guys wanted to watch it for a day and a half trying to get figure out how to get this bed on here and to make it look right. But it just takes time. It just takes time. But anyway, guys, I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get to work on this thing and get it, try to get these angle irons on there and get it to, to hopefully look a little better. So, thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. You know, whether you like what I do, you don't like what I do, that's cool. But, you know, I, I don't care about positive, negative. Oh, and I told you about that aluminum, that aluminum uh, angle iron that I bought. I was going to use it in between the bed and the cab. Because um, I thought it, you know, it's, it's two inches wide. I thought it looked pretty good in there. <coughs> but those two pieces are a 16th inch thick by two inch angle iron that's eight feet long. It cost me $100 for those two pieces of metal. So I'm taking them back. So, Bo, you're not going to pay for those. I'm taking them back. We're going to use free metal instead of $100 metal. So that's cool. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.